No, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Cool. I'm really. cool. I'm joking. Hey guys, it's Matt Haycox here, and today I have got with me a guest who needs absolutely no introduction. She is the, the one woman show, the whirlwind, Katie Price. Now, normally I give you guys a bit of background to our guests, but I know that if I start speaking, she's only going to interrupt me. So, <laughs> we are going to get straight over to Katie and let her, let her do some of the talking. But Katie, thanks a lot for being here. I'm actually really excited because hopefully people will get to see a different side. But before we start, yeah. I always say to people, what did you think, I'd, before you met me, what was your preconception of me? Did you think I'd come with an entourage? Did you think I'd be a diva? Did you think, I don't know, tell okay. me Okay, I didn't think you'd come with an entourage. I certainly didn't think you'd come on your own. Um, what I thought, reason? Um, I guess you just, you just get used to the fact that, uh, you know, that in, the, in this industry, everybody normally comes with somebody, you know, whether, whether it's a manager, a PR person, or even just bringing a friend for support. But, you know, you, you are, I mean, you were def definitely the only celebrity, certainly the biggest name that I've worked with who, who was not, not come with anybody. So um, I like that. Um, what, what was my preconceptions? I knew you'd be a character. I don't, I don't know how far that, I didn't know how far that was going to go, but, uh, but you know, we, we've actually been having a lot of off-camera off conversations. Elaborate on character. There's a reason I'm asking. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd have banter. Yeah, I, I knew uh, you know. I, I knew there would be there would be some some spark about you if you if you like that that has clearly given you a twenty year career. Um, twenty five nearly actually. <laughs> you don't possibly look old enough. Well, I've been to Turkey. <laughs> anyway, I don't have to keep looking at the camera. No, I do enough of that. My reality plug. Well, anyway, just quickly. Go on. The reason I ask now. The media at the moment. I know you can ask me loads of questions, but the media at the moment. If you Google me or read the media, which obviously you did, do you think how they portray me is completely different to the person who's walked in this room today? Yeah, I, th I mean, I do think that, but I mean, I guess look, I, I've, I've been around, you know, around this world a bit insofar as I don't really give preconceptions to, you know, to, to media stories and, and, and I don't think, oh, that's what that person's going to be like. I mean, obviously in a much, much, much smaller world, way, you know, I've, I've had plenty of crap written about me, which is, you know, which I know is either taken out of context or not true. So I can only imagine someone in your, in your position, you know, amplified even more and more. So I, ge I genuinely don't come with preconceptions, but, but... I think, yeah, if I had to have a preconception, I would think you would have come with an attitude. The reason I ask it, because obviously lots of people who would be re, um, watching the podcast, because I might plug it for you. Uh, what can I, I plug so. at the same time? <laughs> I don't know yet. But anyway, we think that. The reason I say it's really important because um, the media can bring people up and down. And the media have so got it in for me at the minute. They write so much shit about me. When I'm in uh, the supermarket shopping, I'm not saying which one, unless they want to sponsor me. It might be Asda, Pocket the Difference, or Tesco's, or Waitrose, or anyone, I'm joking, Aldi, woo, I'm joking. Yeah, if you want to sponsor me, you can. Anyway, as I was saying, and I walk past, I never buy the magazines and that anymore. When I walk past them, obviously I have a look to see if I'm on the cover, or whatever, what, I'm like, what have I done this week? None of it is true, they use horrible pictures. So I don't blame some people being turned off by me, or going against me or people not wanting to use me for their brands because they're judging me by the media. People have to understand media is so powerful, so powerful. Even though I've worked with them, what, over, well, 25 years, they kind of feel they own me and I don't have a say in, in any of it. Or if I did, I'd have to have a lawyer and all the money I'd spend on a lawyer every day would just be, I might as well not work. So it's like, it is unfair because I had a brief chat with you before about what actually is going on in my life. Like, it, they don't know, but from what I've told you, what do you think? I do cope with it well, don't I? 100%, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess uh, as a layman looking at you, you know, we, we, we're not only imagining you co coping with all the craziness that goes, goes on, you know, with whether it's bankruptcy or splitting up with a guy or bringing up kids or whatever. So yeah, I think you, you're certainly, certainly a woman who's, who's gonna have a hands full. But you know, I want to ask you a question. Actually, I, I, normally I go back to the beginning and say I want, I want to talk. You know, talk about your story from from the beginning. And you ha can, but you've got my one with Gemini. What are you? Capricorn. Oh my God, you're not. Oh my oh, God, my we, dad and brother, you are. Are we not stubborn. compatible? Are we not? You are I'm not, stubborn. I am the most non-stubborn person. I am oh so God, I so that. pragmatic and practical. January, yeah. Christmas Day. No way. Mm. What do you think you're Jesus? <laughs> I'm joking. Oh my God, that's so shit. Christmas Day. So that means. 
Oh my god, your birthday and like it's that's crap, isn't it? Well, you got it's six good, you got six weeks crap. to plan what present you're getting me. My brother is second of January and I feel sorry for him because it's like you've just had Christmas and it's like people normally forget to buy him something. When, when, I, was a, when I was a kid, I'd get double presents. So it was, it was Christmas in the morning, birthday in the afternoon. I got to about, I don't know, let's say 12 or 13 and then it consolidated into one. I think from 18, I don't think anyone's ever bought me a present since. Is your mum and dad still together? No. So did you, um, what, when did they split up? My parents split up in 1998. When I, I, How old were you? I'll have been 18, 19 when they started to split say, up. because Obviously at Christmas time, because obviously my kids, I'm not with their dads. And I always say to them, they have two Christmases. So surely your mum and dad, you've got double presents anyway, is what I mean. Uh, well, well, no, they were, they were split up after the point when I was getting old enough for people to stop buying me presents full stop, I think. So you didn't even have an 18th? I had an, yeah, no, I had an 18th. I had a pretty wild 18th, actually. I bet you did, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't want to know if it was wild, I'm joking. Anyway, um, yeah, so basically what I was saying about the starting media. the interview, about how, what your... Uh, perception of me was when I walked through the door is because I think I'm so misunderstood and by the end of this interview I hope people then realize I'm actually a normal person come from nothing I'm a mother of five never ponced off the government never taken anything I pay for everything myself and ex-husbands and you, I've need, you need to stop collecting them yeah I know I've always paid my tax everything but they really do have it in for me. Like if they try and use me as an example for everything, whether it's court for driving, the tax thing or the media, but all right, media, you've, you're not ever going to break me. They will never break, they've tried their hardest, especially last year, but you can ask me all these questions. But let, let, so let me ask you a question about media and like, so I'm, we'll talk about this now and then we'll, then we'll rewind back to, back to when, you, when you first business, started. But it is sort of business because that's my industry. We, so you talk about the power of the media. Obviously, you've you've been around since since well before social media, and and yes, I, well, I was trained to be a nurse when I left school, registered nurse. But you didn't know that, did you? I didn't. I did didn't. You? But hold that thought. Hold that thought. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I, then the reason I didn't finish the course is because I got into page three. Okay. So from the age of what seventeen, this is all I know. The media. That, that is all I know. Well, never mind more. The country needing more nurses. We needed more page three girls, well, I'm didn't we? To so be a you, you the moment, made the right so decision. There you go. I am actually trained to be a paramedic. You didn't know that either. No, I didn't know. Course, you, you, you heard it here first. But the media don't write about that, do they? Because it's all good <laughs> stuff. But I'm actually a very caring person, but go on. But let me, so the media, you, so you've been around, where well, you started your career and, and had, had the bulk of it during a time when, when the only kind of media was media controlled by, you know, by the, the newspapers, the magazines, etc. And, you, and you're now in a world of, of social media where, uh, yes, okay, the, the, the mainstream media are going to do whatever they want to do, but, but you, you, you now have the ability to, to cultivate your own image, you know, put, put, put out your own message. Um, and as you know, a lot, most of our audience is, is young businesses, startup businesses, on, entrepreneurs, and one of the big things I, you know, I talk about is is personal branding and and the ability for every business to be able to use social media to effectively you know go direct to the consumer by, bypass the PR agency and, and this is the thing so back in the day when I started that there was no social media well we, we'll go back to it I want people to be interested in the story of anyway whatever hmm. so back in the day it was harder for people to start up businesses get people to know about their business, that you see cards out or leave them in shops. These days, I hate hearing, oh, I can't get a job, or I can't do this, I can't do that, because you can, because you've got social media to like push it out there. So I, I think having the social media and all of that now opens up such a different platform. Yeah, I know a lot of things are going downhill, like shops, now people go online to read papers, but it's such a better way for people to start businesses in it, I think. like. That's what I think anyway. Although in my case, I don't know. It's hard for me. Well, I think when, when, you, when you say better, I guess it's, it's, not, it's not that it's... Well, it is, it is better, but I guess it is better for the reason that, that, that it puts the business owners in direct control of, of, of their destiny, if well, you if like. they've got enough money, they can pay a celeb to advertise or promote. Whereas if you're going to buy space in a newspaper or magazine, it's a lot more money, or on TV and advert, it's a lot more money, yet... These days, if you pay a celeb, they can pull it out there and straight away it's out. It's such a different world that I'm still new to. And, and how much do you use social media, I guess, yourself to kind of get get your message out there, cult you know, cultivate your image, you know, com combat other things that are going on in, in other forms of media? Well, if I'm honest, I have a Facebook page. I don't run it. I think two fans started it off and um, people around me, they've... Um, 
they all do. I, I'm useless. I'm at, like, well, I can send an email. That's about it. I don't even know how to order anything on shops online. I'm absolute useless. Old fashioned. I even have an, a diary because I don't have it on my phone in case it all disappears. Anyway, in my case, I might not have as many followers as like the reality stars out there now, like Geordie Shaw, Tawi, and all of this. But the difference is, just because people might have more followers doesn't mean to say that they were buy into them or buy their products and stuff. Whereas I know my fans are dedicated. They believe in me. They were buy into, do you know what I mean? It's 100%. dedicated. Um, but some people out there are naive thinking, oh, just because they might have, what, 6 million followers, I'd rather concentrate on them more. I mean, I'm a bit more business savvy like that. A lot of people have to remember, I don't like to do... I know a lot of people come to all us, all us celebs to promote things. And yeah, yeah, I have done it and have had paid posts. But I don't really like doing it all because I don't... I could earn a lot more money if I did the posts what I'm offered and I don't because I don't want to be known as that. Well, I think, you know, the, the, there is a finite limit to how many you can do anyway because, because otherwise you just, you know, you just become a walking billboard where, where, where there's no, um, uh, you know, where there's no genuine, genuine... Yeah, and my the fans, the fans yeah. will believe it. Well, yeah. I looked at my Instagram, so I'm interrupting. Yeah, I should be a politician next week. I'm joking. We can go back to that because I was um, put up to be... Um, politician so be, so before you came today I, w I was having an, another uh, meeting with somebody who's just written an ebook an 11,000 word ebook of how to get yourself elected he's, he's, he's doing political consultancy he's going to send me it tonight oh I'm, I'm going to forward it on to you should add has he done the book yeah he's, he's already oh, done it yeah because um i stood for street in Ermston, i can't ever say in manchester the daily star backed me to do it so we was all there collecting the votes and because everyone knew me as jordan then everyone put my name as jordan when really, if they'd put Katie Price, I would have got more votes than any of the others. So imagine that, because they're no one knew me as Katie Price. Then. So you mentioned Jordan. You know what? I'm going. I'm going to forget the chronology. We'll go back to no, no. I, I, was, I, yeah. I do want to talk about. I, I do want to go back to Instagram and that because a lot of people are catfished and troll. I actually want to talk about trolls and all of that. And me going to the Parliament with my new, um, the House of the Parliament. Anyway, yeah, you know what I mean. My online abuse thing that I'm doing. Did you know about that or not? No, I didn't know. You didn't know I, about that? I'm so poorly researched, oh aren't God, I? Oh my God, I thought you'd be up You're going to blame Georgia. She, she so I'm research trying to create me. a new law. I don't know. Um, didn't you know about that? Harvey's no. law? No. You're joking. Now you say it, it may ring a vague bell, but no. So, I, I know I'm so proud enough. of myself that me and my mum, we've been to the Houses of Commons, we've done our debate. Basically, I start, I'm, look, I'm changing the subject. Basically, my son gets trolled a lot. Mm -hmm. And this is how... On your page or on his or just in general? Uh, him, out of all my kids, him. I'll explain it. So basically, he doesn't understand it, but I can and I will stick up for him. So basically, I started off a petition that online abuse should become a criminal offence. And this is one powerful thing that no one could knock me for. Being a celeb in my way is powerful because I got enough signatures to make it go to Parliament as a debate. So at the moment, we've got, it's taken two years... Um, We've been to the select committee and put our case forward. Um, I've got over 235,000 signatures in five days. Um, normally you need 10,000 for anyone to look at it. Anyway, so I've done that. So it'll be Harvey's law. We know in December if it's going to be a lot. But the only thing stopping it is how much abuse should someone give before yeah, what, what, it becomes what, what, a what, What's the line, yeah? <laughs> because us English and that, we are all matter of fact, you know, We've all got comments to say, but people know when you're over the limit. Like Frankie Boyle, I've done a documentary on him when he said on stage that the only reason I married a cage fighter was to stop Harvey fucking me, basically. And at the same time, Channel, Channel 4, were, um, in the adverts, were promoting the Paralympics. So I wrote to Channel 4 and said, how can you be promoting the Paralympics, yet you've got a comedian on stage mocking a disabled child? Anyway, they didn't apologise. Frankie Boyle didn't want to talk, so I'd done a whole documentary so I was so angry that just because you're a comedian, what gives you the right to go on stage to mock people with, like, anything? So basically, my message to him was, if his wife or kids ever had an accident and they got paralysed from the neck down and he had to care for them all the time, would he be taking the piss then? Things like that. I get really serious about it, as you can tell. I know we had lots of banter before we started, and I switched into my business mode. So basically, they call Harvey, like, um, black spastic. Um, people say... How can you have a black, ugly cunt like that? He's a black kid, like, has he dribbled and all of this? So I thought, do you know what? I'm not having this. People have done vines on him where they made up they're having sex with him. So I went to the police. They arrested two people, but there's nothing they could do because there's nothing in place. So that's why I started this um, 
thing because this what I mean about social media. How, how, how would you, I mean, I guess if from a UK perspective, you know, there, there could be some control over it, but how, how would you envisage that being policed from a worldwide perspective? Well, think about it. They also, people, there's so many people committing suicide now. It's against, it could be against anyone. There could be someone in the workplace being bullied. You could be gay or your cousin. Oh, no, no. I, no I, get, I get what the abuse is, but what I mean is how, how would the police a actually, you know, pol police the problem, you know, given, given that these okay. trolls could be international and, well, this, Yeah, well, I want to make hidden, it worldwide. Hidden, hidden I would go behind. to all the okay. countries and do it, but that's my next plan. Um, I know I haven't spoken about business yet, but the thing <laughs> is... Um, yeah, it should be stopped. What was I saying? Uh, yeah, there should be something in place for it, definitely. But you know, like if you go and get a mortgage or a car, they want to know your details, your past and all that. And I think all social medias should do the same because otherwise people get closed down and they could just open up another site and a different name. So I think it should be more like police, you know what I mean? More, yeah, so you can track these people. And I know for a fact that if, if trolls knew that there was something in place that if they cross the line they would get arrested and they could be put to prison I think there'd be less of it it won't stop it but I think it'll make th people think twice so let me let me ask you a business related question yes. on that theme then right so, because and, and obviously I know this this is in a different context to, you know, no, to, to, to Harvey's situation but uh, you know, again one, one of the things I quite regularly talk about is 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 trolls and uh, I guess you know trying to Look, look beyond the negativity and, and not, not let it start online because I think no one can argue with the fact that, that, that building an online brand, you know, things like you know, having a podcast as a business owner or you know, um, you're creating videos on, on Facebook, YouTube profiles, etc. It, you know, it, it is clearly a business, you know, a business and marketing tactic that works. But so many people, and myself included, don't start it or to, don't start it soon enough because of, um, because of the fear of trolls. But you know, because because of you know, I guess you know the fear of being ridiculed. I mean, I, I I've probably been doing this kind of stuff for about twelve months now, and, and I'm I'm a you know I'm a confident person in day to day life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Despite you trying to put me under pressure, I haven't started yet. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, even I, I was probably asked to start making videos six, seven, eight months uh, before I actually did. And, uh, and it, it was only, you know, I, I guess some big people in the game who I was watching seminars from who were talking about the fact that, look, you know, social media is, it, it isn't for your friends. You know, it's for, it's for your business. You know, don't, you know, don't worry about that's what true, they're yeah. saying. And in my case, that's true. And, and, and also, um, you know, any, anyone who is saying shit about you, you know, I mean, I mean it's, it's going to be some, some dickhead with a profile that, has, that, hasn't, that hasn't got a picture, that's got no yeah. pals, that lives with his mom, that's never had a shag, or, or, or whatever, you, whatever you want to say in your head to, you know, to, to convince yourself how, how shit they are. And as soon as I heard all that, I actually thought, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to get on with it. So I make my first video, you know, I'm a bit nervous while I'm doing it. And the second day, you know, I've put it up there and no one said anything bad and I even I expected some gentle ribbing from my mates at least but you know but not even that and then you know second day on third day on I, I've, I've still I've still not got any grief now obviously in hindsight I've also realized I, because I haven't got enough grief I also haven't got a big enough audience because you know once your audience grows you know you, you might be, get a couple more now I'm gonna <laughs> you will start to get the grief in. and you know three four six months and yes I would get some negativity but I guess by that point I've, I'd, I'd, I'd built up a, resi a resilience not to care and, and, and not to expect it but uh, how I mean, I guess you know what's what's your view on that kind of thing? Um, yeah. You know, given given that any negativity you're personally going to get is going to be on an on an immense scale, and you you, yeah. you know you're going to polarise people a lot more than I probably would, or or your day to day business owner. I would say I'm, I'm probably an exception because I'm an exception. Exceptional. exceptional. No, not like that. In the way that I get it every single day. I can't go home and turn off, like switch off. I, I don't even read all the comments, to be honest. Why do I want to read? There's always going to be people abusing me, having their comments, and they're allowed to. Why not? The media attack me every day, and it's like, I suppose I've built up a shield that you can fire a cannonball at me, but you won't, you won't ever get to me. Don't get me wrong, I am human, I have feelings, but it's that like I've built this resilience, but I don't think that's normal that I've done that either. So all I can say to people is that I'm, uh, there was a w girl who was in Big Brother years ago, and I saw her at some event, and she went, how do you put up with uh, all the press being horrible? Because they've just voted me the worst dressed. And I thought, the worst dress, is that all you're worried about? It's, ah, uh, and that, she was really upset about that. So some, I don't know, I think I'm just quite a um, strong I, character I mean, that I mean, yeah. people can, some people could sit in the corner, moan about it. The thing is, 
I don't read it, I look at the pictures. I always put the worst pictures up of me. But I just think to people, they're talking about you, they've taken their time, ignore it. Just, just ignore it, who cares? If you're doing what you want to do, who actually cares? If it's been successful, su success is the best revenge, is what I say. And like with businesses, I know you're gonna ask me loads of questions. Don't, you know, your dreams can come true if they're realistic. And always start small with business, but I know we'll talk all about that anyway. Yeah, go on. Did I answer it? Like, no, 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 that answered it, but I guess I guess if you were to just give one take home to it's you. It's like bullying and that, like, it's awful. I'd love to do talks around schools about bullying and like, even if I took Harvey, because it's like, I know for a fact, all these people who troll Harvey, if they actually met him, they'd be disgusted with himself. It's like, he's innocent. But, but you know, but, but these, these trolls, these people that say it, you, I mean, you said like, if they met him, they'd be disgusted with themselves. If they, 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 they wouldn't dare, I guess this is what you have to get your head around, that these people wouldn't dare step foot out of their house. If, if, they, if, they, if they saw him, they wouldn't even think about trolling because you know, they, they, they wouldn't have the balls to anyway. Who's that English cricketer? What was his name? Something Stoke, um, what's his name? Is he the England captain cricketer? Oh, you must know his name. Yeah, have a Google. Google it, Georgia, Google That's it. That's your PA, I haven't got one. <laughs> um, so Ben Stokes, this cricketer, he'd done a video on Harvey and mocked it. Um, he got in massive trouble. It was all over the media. You would think he would know better than to mock him. Anyway, all his lawyers and that got involved. Um, wanted to do an apology thing for me and then he wanted to meet me and Harvey and I was like, no, you're not. Because why would you do it anyway? Uh, there's been other celebs who've done it, like mocking Harvey, and I just think, why, why would you even do it? What, what do you get out of it? Like, and there's that one lately. Is it Dapper? What's his name? Dapper laughs. Like he didn't, but his friend did. Um, I, I actually, I actually, ha I actually had Dapper on. Uh, I, I, I Dapper haven't on met him, but I know he got in contact um, with Chris, saying, "Look, can she um, stick up for me? It's not my fault. It's just because he was associated with him." So I was trying to say, who would want to be associated to this guy if you do stuff for charity? It's like, what's so funny about picking on Harvey? Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I am strong about that. People can say what they like about me. I'm used to it, but it's still not nice because people judge me on it, but whatever, in it. But, uh, but obviously, that's, I mean, that's you, that's you with... Uh... But they don't know me. They judge me. They don't. I'm actually a decent, normal, down-to-earth girl. Like, normal. I'm, don't, you, don't you think I'm normal or not? I'm nuts, but normal. Yeah, not? nuts, but normal. Yeah, 100%. You started. Why was that when I said I'm normal? <laughs> why, why did you start to them? I was I was going to lengthen lengthen the answer, but no, no, you 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 are you, like you say batty, but um, but am I really? Do you know what my friends say to me? They they're like Kate. Just full of energy. They say you're unique. You are nuts, but not in a bad way. No, absolutely not at all. You, you can see you're very genuine. Oh, good. But if you, yeah, but if if you had one one single piece of advice, to, you know, to, to a. a a young girl who wants to be a singer, you know, and 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 put a craft out there on YouTube, or or or, or, or to a guy who who who's a, wants to, wants to be a personal trainer and put you know fitness advice out there on on Instagram, but they're you know, they're, they're worried about any negative feedback. Yeah, never what, have what regrets. Would you Just give them? do it. Like music. When I mention music, everyone laughs at me. I know I can sing. I'm not the best, but I know I can sing. I love it. And my dream was always to be a pop star or a model. And I'm not giving up on it. I'm still going to release another album. Lucky you've got iTunes and stuff, so there's no top of the pops in that anymore. But I will do it because I love it. But I'm not doing that for the money. I'm doing it because purely I want to do it. I enjoy it. And that's that. So anyone out there who wants to do anything, just do it. It's like you, you're in a room yourself. You're enjoying yourself. So who cares what anyone says? Not every day is someone going to say, um, you're never going to always get good comments every never in a million years and the, uh, nobody's and, perfect and the only things you regret are the things you don't do exactly yeah. but in my industry it's like there's so many people you probably would agree with me that are manufactured in a way that they come across all perfect and all that on telly but behind the screens they're not like that because they're manufactured people have tried to manufacture me in a way and but I'm like no I am what I am I make mistakes I'm not perfect and I'd prefer to do that than be controlled to something I'm not so talking about manufacture let's let's rewind rewind back to back to your teenage years so so you were a trainee nurse trained to be registered nurse and 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 what and you, and you wanted you wanted to be a model or you 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 got scouted you you fell into page three? there was actually something on my um instagram Actually, maybe you could find that PA. What's your name again? Georgina. I'm, sorry, I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah, Georgie. <laughs> if you can find, this is really interesting. I put it on Instagram. Me as um, a young girl, my dream. 
I wrote when I was um, 11 years old, I found one of my old English books and it said, when I grow up, what I want. And it's only about that, but you'll find it on there. And I'll read it to you. And everything I said has come true. Basically, all my dreams have come true, apart from I, I don't want to be a secretary. I said I wanted that. And I said I wanted to find um, a rich man with money. Right, this is what, right. The Metro Rose Basketball. Where's your camera? Which one is it? It's the back of the Right, so this I'm reading, okay? So, at the age of 13, these are my goals. Ready? Oh, let me get close. So I put, when I grow up, I hope to find a nice, good-looking man with... You found me. I crossed out lots of money. Oh, yeah, that's because it's me. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've crossed out lots of money. <laughs> and I want to own riding stables and travel around the world. I want to be a secretary as well. But already I have had three horses, so that's the start. I want a big house with a swimming pool and stables and a sand school. All of that has come true. What did I say? I quickly realised I didn't want to, didn't want or need the man with the money, but the rest came true. Thirteen, I was there. So all my dreams and more have come true, and to the point, my dream car. I bought it two years ago. Which is? Your laugh. What do you think my dream car was? And I bought it two years ago. Pink Range I was going to say I want to say something stereotypical like a pink Range Rover, no, but, okay. but go on. One thousand eight hundred pounds for it. A mini. A Vitara Jeep. Oh really? I, so I remember when, when I was when I was a kid, I used to want. I yeah, so Jeep. I bought that and had it all sprayed pink. And this is the thing about media. Anyway, I tried to sell it in the end, put it on eBay, and it got up to sixty thousand pounds. The Sun followed the whole story. Then eBay got in contact, took it off because they had so many trolls on it about Harvey saying, has he dribbled on the back seat, all of this. And um, they took it off because of the trolling I had on Harvey. So I still got the bloody thing. What, what else was I going to say? So, so with you, the yeah. bankruptcy thing, we go to that. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> you've obviously told everyone, for everyone who doesn't know, so I do listen. I, I know I look like all over the place, but I do listen. Um, so you had it shit. You had basically everything, living the life, living the dream. And then you lost it all. Yes. And as a person, how did that make you feel? Was you embarrassed? Did you feel ashamed? What, what was the feeling? Because you find out who your friends are, don't you? Like things yeah, like you certainly find out who your friends are. I, I wouldn't say I was never embarrassed. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was too busy look, looking at myself and, and, if you like, and my problems. Is I mean, that yours or mine? No, that's yours. Oh, really? Yeah, I got you too. Oh, I, thank I got, you. Um, so, so my... Um... Bloody hell, don't he talk a lot? <laughs> <laughs> he tries to talk. Like I'm bored already. <laughs> I'm joking. No, go on, no, go on. So when I went bankrupt, my daughter was about 14 months old. Um, and I'll have been 27, 28. Um, so, and, and the, the only stories that people were telling me were, when, you, when you're bankrupt, that's it, you're over, your life's fucked, you, you'll, you'll, you'll never restart. Um, so, so, I mean, I, di I didn't really know any different. You know, I'd, I'd, never, w I'd never worked properly for anyone else. I'd always dabbled around in my own businesses unsuccessfully before I made them made them successful so I never I was never worrying about what other people thought of me but but yes I was I was very worried about how how I was going to come out of the other side because the word bankrupt if anyone hears that it feels a very terminal word yeah um and, and but but I guess also at the same time I also knew I didn't know how I was going to get out of it but I knew I would not allow myself to stay in it you know just because at 27 years old I knew I was Unwilling to work for someone else, probably unemployable, and what I needed to get back on my back on my feet somehow. Uh, but I, I, you know, I guess I I was blessed with self no no knowledge around it, but with the self confidence that I was going to do something about it. Right, let me stop there. Mm. People who are watching this might be in the situation of the bankruptcy, like everyone's saying about me. But you've just made a really good point. The word bankruptcy, people are embarrassed or. They feel like a failure or this or that. People can go bankrupt for many different reasons. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean that you can't, you, you, even if you lose everything or whatever. But you just made a good point. A lot of people can't cope with that. So they either do commit suicide or go down a shit hill, like hit rock bottom, and sometimes don't ever come back up. But you made a good point, like I am what I'm going through at the moment, is you got through it. It was shit, really shit, 
but you thought to yourself, I have to do something about it. I, th I think, and, I've probably, and that's what I've, everyone should. I've probably never do, said this though. before, but I think one of the most important things as well you need to think about about bankruptcy is pe people get really, let's say, really worried about it and, and into depression, and like you say, can, you know, can, can kill oh, God, themselves, yeah. can all sorts. But you know, they're doing it because because they're thinking, you know, it's it's this end terminal thing. But I think what you actually also need to appreciate, and this is why having someone to hold your hand, ha having someone who's been there before, and having the right advisors around you is so important. But what you've got to understand is you're going bankrupt for a reason because you, you've got insurmountable debts. Therefore, if anything, you need to look at this bankruptcy as not, not the, end of the, the end of the tunnel, but also almost like the beginning of the light. Because how can the bankruptcy actually be worse than the shit you're suffering, than, than the shit yeah. you're so suffering you right bankrupt, now? Does that make did, sense? Yeah. Did you, when, you, when they declared you bankrupt, mm. did you have a job at that time? Well, I, I had my own businesses, and, and I was made bankrupt as an effect of personal guarantees that I'd given in those businesses. This so is mad. Although I'm going back, I explain, I explain, oh, sorry, I can't go into proper detail about it because it involves an ex of mine, which is why all this happened. Um, but I explained to you in detail what had happened. I mean, yeah, just to contextualise this, yeah. you know, we're, we're talking to Katie at a time where, where, where the newspaper are writing heavily about that, you know, she, she, she's been in an IVA. Yeah, I was, I was. I was paying 12 and a half grand a month. And, 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 she, and she's, I, I was going to say, likely to be declared bankrupt, possibly going to be declared I, I, bankrupt. I, I, I can't, I want it to happen. It's the best thing for me. Right. It's for me, in my case, it's the best thing for me. I'm not ashamed, not, but I'm not anything, because I know my situation, I explained it to you. But um, what was I going to say? What was we talking about? This is what I mean, my head goes well. We were talking about... Oh, yeah, so th that's it. So in my situation, although, you know, it's, I'm supposed to go and bankrupt or whatever, I'm still earning good, earning good money. It, it just don't make sense, does it? It's like I'm still earning... So in my situation, I'm very lucky and fortunate that I'm still working. Some people in this industry who have gone bankrupt or whatever, that they so desperate that they need the money that they lower their fees for things and stuff like that till this day i've never ever lowered my fees for nothing you got me on a good deal though but anyway um I don't, i'm doing this free actually yeah so i did um but yeah so some people they lower their fees and then they can never get back on their feet and then they end up doing all these shows or interviews or shoots for next to nothing, and then the word gets round, and everyone thinks they can get them cheap. Whereas me, I will never lower my price. There's a price to price all the time, because the reason I've gone the bankrupt thing, which I explained to you, is I there was no choice in that situation. But I'm still successful, still a successful businesswoman. Got back on my feet, starting my businesses up. You know, I'm getting slaughtered every day by the media, saying mucky mansions. I'm apparently skint. This that. Do you know what? Let them say it because I will have the last laugh. And anyone watching this, honestly, listen to me. I get shit every day, battered from every, just every angle all the time. If only you knew what happens behind closed doors, I sort of gave you a brief encounter. But it can only I, make I, me stronger. I wasn't stronger. battering behind no, no. closed doors, <laughs> just, just to be clear. But <laughs> it can only make me stronger. And think, do you know what? You're born without money and you die in a coffin. You can't take it with you. So what you make in between? I think of my kids, their future, and that's it. And I've, I've never taken anything off anyone. Yeah, it's a shit situation. So what? I've grown up, and I'm gonna get back on my feet and prove everything. Like, but and, and, I and think, I'm really excited about but, it. But the reason why you're confident and excited, I think, is is the same reason that I don't worry about these things. For, for, for the same, but for different reasons. In that we we both we both have, let's say, a skill. You know, a, a, a body of knowledge you know, that, that will allow us to earn money under any circumstance. You know, you, you, you've got you know, you've got brand Katie. You know, you, you've got your uh, your audience, your fans. You know, the the, the ability to you know, to sell yourself. Uh, and and, and I, I've got my skill set, which which I know will allow me to earn money. You know, if I'm you know plonked in the middle of in yeah. the middle of the I'll desert with, with, with no contacts. Or... So 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 I guess that probably is that me or you. 
that I think as as well as as well as being being relaxed uh, during the bankruptcy process if if you've got the right knowledge and the right people around you yeah, yeah. what what I, what I never had that though. what is key is that you is that you've got a skill set uh, or you know something about you that that will allow you to earn, earn money because because with that that will always give you the confidence to battle through any situation you know to to, to take risks i mean you know, I look at what I do now and I mean when I was let's say 21 to 20 yeah. I'd take absolutely ludicrous risks. Now I still probably take bigger risks, you know, than I should. I, I like to think I'm I'm a bit more conservative than than I was back then. But I think what allows me to to take the extra risk is is, is I know that should I lose it all tomorrow, I would be able to start again the next Same. day. I think I'm it quicker shed. than six, six, so, like imagine. Even if I had a log cabin, I'd be happy. In a minute, I'd I'd be happy. I can cope in any situation. Yeah, I can have the luxuries, it's nice, but I'm also so, like, country girl that I could live in a, cob a log cabin and all of that. I, I'm not high maintenance at all, like what people think. Um, yeah, it's just like, you just find something. But my head is so, like, business, like, and I've been brought up with that work ethnic that I'm a survivor. So t tell me, the, the businesses that you've, you have got, have had in the past, are they things that you, uh, do you have business partners? Do you do things on your own? Uh, you know, t t tell me about you know, one of your businesses well, and a typical structure. Fortunately, one of my um, people who worked for me, like I said to you before, destroyed my career basically, had a, a vengeance against me and they did it really well where it sort of continued like basically when I split from a certain person my career went like that and it's been so hard because the media then turned on me and they still have turned on me so I don't blame brands out there who are like oh, I'm not going to touch her even though I know when they meet me they know I'm completely different got my business head on and I know that I can make money I could put something out there like I could get a really shit cheap table but I could sell it in a way that it's amazing. Do you know what I mean? But that's the media for me. So now it's, I'm changing everything. So I'm starting my YouTube channel. I'm lucky that I've still got a reality show. They've signed me till July. Not many people in my situation even get a show. Um, I've got no PR agent. A lot of people out there pay age, like PR agents to get them media stuff, to get them to events, to do all this. I don't do any of that. I'm just lucky that. So how how, how do you cope from a from a practical perspective, not not having a PR agent? You know, where, where do your inquiries? But what can they do for me? The media have made their decision. So the only way to prove myself is, you know, it's going to go to court. I think it's this month that they're going to declare me bankrupt. But it doesn't stop me. Do you know, I'm still working, still working, still got my house, still going on. I'll be bankrupt for a year and then fresh start again. It doesn't bother me. It's, there's so many things that have happened in my life the past couple of years. And I think it's money. Do you know what I mean? I've had every car you want. It's, it's like I've grown up in that way. Like, for what? You know your friends are. I was the one who always did all the parties, all of this. And then I think, who's actually invited me to their house? I don't know. I've just looked at things in a different perspective. Like, I'm a survivor. I'm actually really excited but, to start again. But uh, as confident... When I say start again, I mean like... Financial my start, empire, yeah. no, not like my empire game, because I had my underwear range, all this out, and it all got destroyed by a certain group of people. That I'm going to bring it back, and I will. And social media nowadays, like you know, um, Instagram, Facebook, all of this, that's the way forward. So it's all new, but that's my platform next. But, uh, but as comfortable as you are going forward, do, do, you, do you regret some of the things that happened? You know, do you look back and, and, and would you have? I mean, I, like I, said, I know you, you you're, you're happy with whatever's happened, but but if you could turn back time, would you do things differently? Do you know what it is? If I could turn back time, I would have just kept my mouth shut. Then I wouldn't have been in this situation. And it's all about point scoring, proving points. And the only ones who won out of the situation that I'm in is an lawyers. ex and lawyers. Lawyers. Oh Jesus, the amount of money I've paid for them. Like, so it's. To me, money's the root to all evil. We all need it to live, but you know who your friends are. I, I, I hate to say it, but I hate money, but you need it to survive. And I'm so, I'm so happy myself. I've come like a long way for this journey that I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. I know what's coming up. I've already had the damage by the media because every day they taunt me for it. And it's not nice. It is hurtful. It's not good for, mentally for me because of what I've been through. But I am a survivor and I'm really, really excited, really excited that now I'm in control. I haven't got a group of people who's 
controlling me. I'm doing everything myself, changing all new people around me as in like accountant, doing my own tax, that I'm just doing everything myself. Whereas before, you just get all this money all the time. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I remember my, my house before, um, I paid just under a million pound to do it up. There's, do you know Dawn from uh, Housewives of Cheshire? Like one of my best mates, yeah. Is she? Yeah. So she'd done uh, three of my houses up. I basically said to her, I bought this house, and I said, just do it, I just want to turn the key. Amazing it was. But yet, yeah, I had no one around me advising me or nothing, so I just like, just everything. Because, well, I could have everything. I still can have sort of what I want, but I don't know, because, well, yeah, it's like footballers, they get it all, but their life stops so it's my I don't know when it was when does my career I don't even know what it is I do what what, what is my job title when I fill out these forms I just say entertainer when, what, when, what when did I you finish say? modeling well I haven't finished wait you see my calendar next year <laughs> it's all out topless all out but this is the thing I, not, I'm expecting issue number one personally signed to me in the post in your dreams or should I write <laughs> wet dreams um the thing is, the modern, it actually hasn't stopped. It's because there's no magazines like Loaded, Maxim, yeah. FHM, all of them. There's none of their magazines. So how can I do it? Like, why do I need to put a picture up on Instagram of me in a bikini? You can just yeah, Google that, it. Yeah. If I could do Playboy again, I would. Um, I loved it. I, I miss doing them glamour shoots. And just because of my age and I've got five kids, I couldn't give a shit. I, if, it's, if people want me to do it, I would still do it. They have these things now called, what is it, OnlyFans or whatever. Oh, yeah. And everyone always says, why don't you do it? I've heard of that. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> so everyone says to Kate, why don't you do it? And they say, because people can just Google you anyway and get pictures of you and like your calendars. It's not that I don't want to do it. It's just that, why do I need to do it? That's an easy way for me to make money. But, and then some people say, yeah, but it'll ruin your career. And I'm like, well, what career? What else could be said about me? Tell me, you've, you've talked a lot about let's say, you know, neg negative, uh, negative people you've dealt with in the past and you know, r relationships that have broke down and I guess people you'd rather have never have dealt with. What, what about some positive influences in your career? Have, 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 Am I quite a negative person? No, 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 not, no, 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 you're super yeah. upbeat. But what I mean is, 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 is the stories that we've talked about you know, all involve people who've let you down or taken advantage of you or, or, or maybe, maybe not delivered what they should have done. Have, have, you, have you ever had any men mentors along the way, you know, people you've looked up to, you know, pe people who've, who've helped you, whether that's uh, now or 20 years I've ago? I've been let down by a lot of people. When I first got my mortgage at 18, um, I had a contract with the son at the time. Daily Star wanted me and The Sun did. So The Sun signed me for three months. My agent um, said I got 25 grand. I was 18, so I got 25 grand exclusive deal with The Sun. Anyway, when I went to get my mortgage, they wanted to see all contracts and stuff that you get. So I asked her for the contract. I was young naive, she wouldn't give it to me. So I called up The Sun. They sent me it and I actually, my deal was 50 grand. She lied to me. Um, so from that age, that was the first time I got ripped off properly. And she was the agent who put out the first horrific headline about me. Basically, I went on a date with a guy called Teddy Sheringham. Really fancied, really, really fancied him. Uh, went on a date with him. And the only person I told was the agent and my mum and dad. No one else knew. And then I was on a shoot and she phoned me up. She said, oh, hello, darling. I'll never forget it because I was young. It was, it was the first ever shocking headline. And I, I wasn't useful that yet because I was just on page three. She said, oh, you're not going to believe it. You're on the front of the sun, my darling. And I was like, what do you mean? She went, and the headline, on your, what is it, on your bed, Ted, or something like that. I was so mortified, like, absolute mortified, because I knew it wasn't true. I knew I had never done that kiss and tell story. I never did it. It was the agent who did it. I got proper stitched up, like, I was so hurt, and I never saw Ted again, because he thought I did a kiss and tell on him. Even though we didn't have set, I didn't do anything with him. But... That was the first time I got stitched up properly by the agent, not with a headline and a contract. And I have been ripped off on the way since, <sighs> taking people to call. Um, the thing is, people get greedy with money. But what about no, no, no one positive, no, no, no mentors, no, you know, no, no one who's taking you under the wing and helping well, you, you thought, out? Well, this is the thing. I thought I had people like that, but um, I'm 41 now and there's probably one person around me now who I, I trust one person who does my deals and my money, a guy called Andrew. He's the only person. Everyone else has let me down, ripped me off, taken money off me. I don't trust anyone. That's why now I'm really excited about the future because I've sorted everything out. Um, I'm going through my divorce at the moment of um, 
Kieran, he's not after money or anything like that. As long as we both share the kids, that's all we want. First guy that's not after me for anything, even though it destroyed me in my head. Um, I'm excited to do it all myself. Like, just, yeah, I'm, I'm excited because I'm in control. No one's telling me what to do, not that they did anyway, but you know what I mean. It's, I'm excited to start my brands and I just want this bankruptcy thing just to hurry up so then I can look forward to the end of them 12 months out of it. Can't wait. So um, I, I, I guess we've talked businesses and we've talked about you in the public in the public eye. I mean, you, you're probably one of the UK's you know, most fa you know, famous. I hate that word, famous. Most well, most, most well known, uh, well known female celebrities. Yet we, you know, we don't really see you anymore on on the cover of OK magazine or or Hello or on on a red carpet yeah. event or something. I mean, you know, why is that? Given you know, given how you still still seem to be making headlines on a daily basis. Do you know what I think it is? I think all the mags in that have proper battered the shit out of me. So I think to myself, why just when you call up, you decide that you want to do an interview with me and make it positive about what I'm up to and offer like just a few grand? I'm like, no, I'm worth more than that. You've been slating me every week. So why should I like... I've got pride and respect for myself. Why should I put myself at just for a shoot for a measly, like, few grand? No thanks. Go and get some other celeb to do it. OK Magazine. Um, I still use... I still would charge them the same sort of price as I would do back in the day, even though nowadays... You know, all these mags haven't got as much money as they did, but I still do the fee that I'd always do. So that's number one, probably why I'm not in them so much. And two... What, they hurt me all the time saying the stuff they do. Even though I don't let it get to it, it does hurt, but I'm resilient to it. But it's still up here somewhere in my head. For what? But I'd love to do all the magazines again, and I would love to do the shoot. I do miss doing it, but they've got to just be a bit more kinder to me, like at least write the truth or I'm not a bad person at all. But I do miss doing it all. But, um, yeah, it's like... But, yeah, all the exes and that sell me out, do stories. It's It's heartbreaking when I do that because it's like why would you do that to me yeah I, I've got so much I could say on all my exes I could destroy them in my own little ways and they know it and I never would because I'm not that kind of person I haven't been brought up like that and it's not tip for tat I know I've done my books and said bits in my books but I still held back a lot of stuff because if it makes them feel better to get that dirty money let them but red carpet events I never understand it. I know, I know I'm a good person and I know I'm not that person that's the, the media right. But I'm, and the media know, when they, they know what I'm like as a person because they've met me. So they know I'm decent, but I don't know why they pick on me. But the red carpets, like the Pride of Britain, I've never, ever been invited to that. It's still like me and Pete. People play me and Pete off. Pete would get invited. I never do. Yeah, even now, my show I do is Shiver Quest. It's owned by ITV. I was on Loose Women for years, all of this and that. So, obviously, when I see these events and, you know, online, you look at them, I think to myself, that person's not a celeb. Someone, like, from Love Island three years ago, why the hell have they got an invite and I haven't? Yet, yeah, I know for a fact that, and I'm not being big-headed, say, like, there's a big film premiere, I know for a fact, when I turn up on that red carpet, I guarantee you, I'm the main picture or the main story of anyone else there. So I look at it and think, why wouldn't they want to invite me then? Whether they think I'm bad or not, I would give that publicity to that film or whatever. The reg like Pride of Britain, yes, they would never invite me for that, even though I live and breathe that because of Harvey and whatever. Um, TV Awards, all of the... I don't know, I'm, I've got my own bloody TV show. Why don't I? I don't know why I don't go to it. I don't know why they don't invite me, but it's weird. Um, I don't know, it's... It's, it's upsetting in a way because it's like I've lived and breathed that career since a young girl. Why, have they, why are they all turning against me? I don't understand it. What, what have I actually done wrong? I haven't actually done anything wrong. I don't understand. But they get these measly people who've been around five minutes on the red carpet. I don't understand it. It's, it's, uh, I, 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 I can't answer that. But as for the magazines, I would love to do the shoots for them. But it's, it's just the boring old questions, isn't it? Like, why can't they talk about me, the future, the fresh me? And yeah, that's why I do the YouTube thing now, talking of that. 
YouTube. So has your YouTube channel started now? So I've joined uh, this company. They came to me. They've obviously checked out all my social media stuff. I don't know why I didn't do it years ago, this YouTube. And it's such a good way. Oh my God, you split your balls hanging out. Uh, look at you checking. <laughs> because it's happened to me once before, That's actually. It. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Oh, saggy balls. No, no, not anyway. on camera, but no, no, tight jeans. Has anyone saggy balls. ever sent you that video where a man's doing a dance and he goes like that and then he's whipped his trousers and his balls hang out? No. Oh, I love it. Anyway, that's me. my mum's. I'll show you. <laughs> anyway, back to seriousness. So, I would love to do all the red carpet events. I, I, I've never gone to an opening of an envelope. I've never done that anyway because I think being a bit more discreet is better than. I, I, I don't want to turn up to every event. Because I'm a bit more exclusive than that. And not only that, I'm old. I'd rather stay in and have a takeaway and have people around for dinner and that. When I do my club PAs, every time I do them, it ends up in the paper, oh, she's out drunk, blah, blah, blah. What am I supposed to do in a club? Drink water? Well, everyone else is having a drink. Why can't I do that? It's like, I'm a 41-year-old woman of five. I'm allowed to let my hair down as well. I, whatever I do is not right at the minute. So it's my mission. Now I've got my YouTube channel and my reality show that hopefully people will get to see the real me and... And what kind of content are you putting out on YouTube? So, my reality show is my reality show where they do my reality stuff. And YouTube is um, a bit different. It's more about me answering back things, like that Colleen and Rebecca Vardy thing, my oh, view yeah. on that, which I don't do all that on my reality show because it's more about my life or whatever. So it's quite fun things. There's a thing I want to do. This is my dream. It's really sad. I bet this would make a headline. It's, that's how easy I know to make a headline. How boring is that? But anyway, I would love to walk through an airport in a Mac on all suspenders, right? And obviously someone film me on their phone or whatever. Me? And Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, when they say, uh, Madam, can you take your coat off? Well, they probably don't go, Madam. They're probably like, oh, okay, you are. Anyway, can you take your coat off? And I'll be like, no, I don't want to. Uh, I'm afraid you have to take your coat off to go for the scanner. But I don't want to. They call security over. This is what I'm imagining. I'm just making up. No, I don't want to take my coat off. All right, if you insist, I will. And then take it off and just stand there in all like sexy suspenders and under and then walk through. I'd love to do that <laughs> and have it filmed put on my YouTube. Don't you think that'd be funny? Yeah, I love it. Guys, that was the whirlwind I promised you at the beginning. And uh, you know what? I had 40 questions to ask. I don't even think I got to ask one of them, but I love the conversation. Do you want to know why? Go on. Do you remember the Mr. Men? Yeah. I'm Mrs. Chatterbox. <laughs> She's Mrs. Chatterbox, but whilst none of the stuff was probably what I thought we'd talk about in the beginning, there's some mega, mega stuff in there, some really useful stuff, some really interesting stuff, and uh, it's been it's been a pleasure to meet you. I loved it. Hopefully, hopefully I can inspire a lot of you with um, some of the things I said. Um, actually, I think we should do a part two. We will, definitely. I love that. Nice 100%. to meet you. Listen, great to meet Thank you too. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Bye.